you probably thought you were going to hear some great preaching. I, <laughs> I don't know uh, about all that, but this, <laughs> this, this may uh, be my last opportunity to preach here at seminary for a little while. And, uh, and so I, I did spend a, a bit of time praying about it, and I, I gave it a lot of thought. Uh, I, I love each and every one of you. I've been uh, I've been blessed uh, in my time here at seminary to, to get to know you and uh, to befriend you. I've made a lot of good friends, great friends here at seminary. Uh, and I think it's been said uh, from this pulpit more than any other that I'm aware of, uh, I'm not going to teach you anything new today. And uh, I, I'm nothing that hasn't been preached before. Uh, but maybe you're like me, <laughs> and you're hard-headed, and uh, you've got to hear it several times uh, before it sinks in. And uh, open your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 6, this afternoon. John, chapter 6. The title of my message today is, Supper is Ready. Perhaps this is a very familiar scripture to us all, but I've learned, and I'm still learning, uh, that the Word of God, it's alive and it's full. It's a well that uh, my bucket has not found the bottom of. John chapter 6, beginning in verse 1, says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed Him, because they saw His miracles, which He did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down, now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Verse 13, Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Let's pray. God, we come to you this afternoon and we just thank you for your word. God, I, would, I pray that we would recognize uh, what a jewel that we have. Uh, that we would take it, that we would cling to it, that we would hold to it, we'd study it, we'd know it. God, that we would distribute it. Thank you for loving us, for being so good to us all the time. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. In my flesh at times, I have often found myself wondering, and uh, perhaps you have too, what am I going to preach? Uh, what, what, what am I going to feed uh, this hungry people? Well, number one, uh, we need to see the people. All right? We need to see them. Uh, we need to realize, you know, first off, Jesus saw this multitude of people. In the other gospel accounts where this is recorded, it says that Jesus, He had compassion on the multitude. Uh, he, he cared for them and, and He cared enough. He saw the need enough to see that they were hungry, that they needed to eat. To, he, he cared enough to feed them. Amen. And He asked Philip, knowing what He would do, He says, where can we buy bread that these may eat. My first point is that you don't need to go to the store because supper is ready. 
Preacher, if you care about people, if you care about your church members, your wife, your kids, your friends, your family, you're not going to watch them starve. You, you, you love the Lord, Peter. Feed my sheep, Peter. Right? Uh, you, you can read all the books. And you can watch all the videos and the TikToks and, and you can Google it and you can try to find things and lessons and you can do all you want to do. You can look for ideas here and there and you can listen to other preachers preaching and you can borrow outlines and, 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 and you, maybe you think you've preached uh, every message that you can out of this old book. And, and, and you think that maybe they need something new. They need something different. Maybe, maybe they whine and they complain or they've got itching ears, right? Like the Israelites wandering in the desert, right? Maybe, maybe we're just lazy. Right? It's a whole lot easier to go buy something. So, so we think. Listen, maybe at times we act just like the disciples here. You know, we we got to go. We got to do something. We we got to go to the store, and there's some good stuff out there, right? You, you got to dig through all the trash to find it, but but there is some good stuff out there. But y'all, supper is ready. There, there there there's no missing ingredients. It's all here. Everything that's needed. We don't need to go buy anything. And there's a little lad here. In our text, with five loaves and two small fish. A little bit of bread and a little bit of meat. This is all I've got. It may not seem like much, and we may not have anything else, but nobody needs to go shopping because it's all right here. And you take what you've been given, and you give it to the people. Because you care about the people. Number two, we don't, we don't need anything else. Right. Supper's ready. Listen, hey, I, I'm a big supporter of Bogart Press. I, I, I think we need to print all of the literature, and we, I think we need to get it out, and, and that it's good stuff. There's, there's people all over the world selling all kinds of poisoned goods, sending people straight to hell, crossing land and sea to make one proselyte, but in the end they're twofold the child of hell as they were before. We need to share the truth and we need to teach the truth and we need to teach the doctrines of God's Word. I'm all for it, but you're not going to find anything out there that's as nutritious and beneficial as what God has prepared right here in His Word. Amen. Paul, he told the, the church there at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, he said, I, I, I could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal. Even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. The writer of Hebrews, Paul, <laughs> said in chapter 5, in verse 12, he says, For when, uh, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of, a right, un, of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Listen, your churches and your family and your friends, they are comprised of a lot of different people, right? At different ages. And you're right, and they, they can't eat all the same thing. They, they can't all digest the same thing. They can't even eat all the same amount. We would do well to understand that. We've we got adults that eat like children, and we've got children uh, that, that are eating steak and, and vice versa and everything in between. What is this basket among so many? Well, you better believe that supper's ready. For every one of them, whether, whether they like it or not. Whether, whether we like it or not. Maybe it is hard to swallow sometimes. But we don't need anything else. I don't know about you at your house. My house growing up, if I didn't eat what mama put on the table, I didn't eat. Right? And the same is true for my son, Bo. But hey, you know, when we get a steak at my house, which isn't very often, but when we do, Bo, he gets a little piece of steak. But most of what Bo eats is the carbs. <laughs> he, he likes the carbs, you know. 
I, I find it very interesting. I'm not going to jump out on a limb and I'm not going to tell you this is what that means. But I do find it very interesting that there were five loaves and two fish in this basket. Now that's how our preaching should be. It, it, ought to, it ought to be out of this basket. Number one, and, 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 but there's no need to go to the store and, and it ought to be simple enough for the kids to eat. And it ought to be uh, uh, with enough meat that the saved man of God uh, that's been serving the Lord faithfully for decades in his 80s can eat and be satisfied. Whether, we, whether they like it or not, whether we want to preach it or not, we don't choose, we don't change the Word of God. Whether we feel like it or not, they can whine and complain. We've got everything that we need and we don't need anything else for anybody else. This is all we have and it's everything that we need. Supper is ready. Number three, we have more than we need. Amen. Supper is ready. The, the Bible, it's incredible. Amen. It's inerrant. It's infallible. You can preach this out of this Bible as long as the Lord allows you to. You, you can have a ministry that goes on for decades. And, and you can take some bread and you can take some meat out of here and, and you can give it out and you can come right back and you can do it again and again and over and over and over again. You take it and you distribute it. You pass it out to every man, woman, boy, and girl. To the multitudes, to the individuals. And listen, when you finish the race, <laughs> there are baskets left over that you never were even able to touch. You'll never preach it all. You'll never find the bottom. And so you take it and you preach it and you let the Lord do what the Lord does and you keep coming back for more and you give them what the Lord gives you. You feed the people what the Lord has provided. You're going to have those Israelites in the wilderness. And they get tired of the manna. And they're going to want something different. And those itching ears. And, and you just keep coming back to this basket. They don't like it. You reach in and you grab some more. Right? It says that they were filled. They, they could not eat anymore. The, the Greek word there, it suggests a gluttonous type of fool. Look, they, they had all they wanted. They ate everything they could. They could not intake any more of this. You're not ever going to run out. Uh, we, we have more than we will ever need. Supper is ready and there's no way that any of us will ever be able to eat it all. You're not going to be able to pass it all out. Amen. Listen, this is, this is a miracle in our text today. This is supernatural. This, this defies the laws of physics and mathematics. It doesn't make sense in our minds. This is something that only God can do. The, the disciples, they, they never could have fed all these people. They, they didn't have a clue what to do. They didn't know where to go. They didn't have the money, the resources. They, and what they did have, they knew it was not near enough. But Jesus knew what He would do. Yes, yes. Listen, me and you, wherever we go, whatever we get, whatever we find... Everything we have, it will not measure up. It will not be sufficient. It will not satisfy. But if anybody ought to know where to go, it sure ought to be the preacher. Yeah, we can't comprehend it. And we can't, we can't make sense of it. But God's Word will not return to Him void. Amen. It pleases God by the foolishness of preaching, preaching of the Word, to save them that believe. Amen. Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. That's right. That's right. You preach the word. You don't have any visitors? Preach the word. You have a small congregation. Preach the word. Attendance is falling off. Preach the word. You reach in there and you grab some more and you preach the word. Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday night, any other opportunity that you get. Funerals, weddings, special events, ministries. Preach the Word. Amen. Instant, in season and out of season. And you preach it and you preach it with urgency and with authority. And you stand in that altar that nobody's knelt down in for months. 
and you begin to wonder and you begin to start and doubt and, and, and you begin to question your calling and, and you're considering other options as though there's anything out there that would ever compare and you get discouraged and you get disgruntled all the while Jesus knew what he would do I'd been preaching and teaching for four months <laughs> And I ran out of everything I knew to teach out of this book. I thought, I'm going to have to go to the store. Right? I, I, I'm thankful that I was in seminary, surrounded by, by men that showed me and taught me, no, I just need to go back to the Bible and open it up. Uh, uh, take another look inside. Uh, listen, I, I had been preaching for four years. And I hadn't seen a single salvation under my preaching. And, and, and I, I'm not sure I had seen any decisions at all. And, and I, I began to get discouraged. And I thought, well, maybe I need to get something else. I, I, I'm, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I need more object lessons or, or videos. I, I, I'm doing something wrong. There's something more I've got to do. This isn't enough for them. And Satan's planting seeds of doubt in my mind. Like maybe I'm not even really called to preach. Maybe I misunderstood God. Maybe that's not really what God told me. And listen, I know there's pastors that have been preaching for even longer than me. And, 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 and their ministries and their preaching on the surface in the eyes of man, it, it seemed maybe unfruitful to them. We want to see souls saved. And we want revival. But all we see is empty altars for seasons. Seems like we're in a drought. Right? And listen, you keep spreading the seeds. There's no sign of rain. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And then one Wednesday night, a little 10 year old girl got a hold of a piece of bread that seed took root she came and she sat down on my knee with tears in her eyes and she prayed and she asked Jesus to save her and forgive her of her sins Amen. preacher preach the word Amen. we may not know we may not see what God is doing but He knows exactly what He's doing and He's given us everything we need. More than enough. We just need to keep coming to Him and keep passing it out. There's a multitude of hungry people out there. And this is what they need. And it's all that they'll ever need. Essentially, Truly, really, for the preacher, it boils down to whether or not we trust Him or not. That's right. And what He's called us to do and, and what He's given us to distribute. Yeah. Trust Him and preach the Word. Amen. Dig in there. Study it. Don't be lazy. Don't grow weary. Don't give up. You preach it with compassion. You preach it with urgency and you preach it with authority. The promise of the harvest is built into the Great Commission. It's built in, but it's not your responsibility. You preach the Word. Let God handle the rest. He knows what He's doing. Let's pray.